I would like us to uh, turn to the chart. I've tried to show a symbolism of this. This chart uh, is showing the seven, but it's also showing the two, the two that, that are come before it. There are nine spheres altogether, and I'm sure there's many spheres to come hereafter in another age. But for our time, these are the seven that we try to journey through. The first one, if you look at the bottom, because we move up, symbolizes the matrix of nature, matrix of nature for all of us, childhood, for humanity, the evolutionary period. And as we went through this before, but uh, bears repeating, Adam uh, represents when we awaken to the fact that we could have a spiritual consciousness, that we can come to that stage of responsibility, which we would call adolescence, where we have to start making decisions of which direction are we going to go, the path of passion or the path of purpose. That's what Adam. But then we come to that period of time when we, we know that troubles are all around us. We see the disintegration. We see the pain. This happens in every generation when change is about to come. We sense it before it happens. It per puts those who are really sincere on the path of search. They start looking for answers. They start looking for something to answer the driving questions and fears of their time. Abraham was the answer in his day. But Baha'u'llah has come with that same spirit of oneness that Abraham saw as one God. Baha'u'llah has come and brought it in the sense of the oneness of humanity and the union of all the manifestations into a oneness. So Abraham, in this case, is reborn inside the Baha'i faith when we recognize the spirit of oneness as it applies to our time, the oneness of truth and the oneness of humanity. And then like Moses, oh, and we recognize who is the Lord of our age, as Abraham recognizes the God, the true God, the God of oneness, we recognize that the Lord of oneness has come. So this is where we recognize, and as we all know, we sign the card. But then we have to move on and realize that this Lord has laws and an administration and a covenant that we have to honor and work within in order for us to stay united and together. Government, in this sense, by law, is the unifying principle of justice that all men must come to, regardless what stage of development or what degree of wisdom. We still obey the law. And when people try to abandon the law because they think they're wise enough they don't need the law, I suggest to you this is a great error. Uh, I don't care how, wi how uh, wise you are, you still have to go by the speed limits. I don't care how wise you are when it says red on the stop sign or red on the stop light, it's time to stop. Wisdom does not give you the right to go through a red light. And apply this to daily living and you see that there's a standard way by which society must operate. Baha'u'llah has come with the law that needs to be applied in this day just as surely as Moses' law in his day. But now Moses has been reborn in Baha'u'llah. Christ came with that new understanding that there's a spiritual invisible realm called the kingdom. And until we let go of our material attachments and turn to the Lord of that age, that uh, in his day it was Jesus, was the point that all had to turn to to find this truth and power. Now in this day, Baha'u'llah, in the return of the Spirit of Christ, the return of the spirit of the I am that spoke to Moses has come to bring us that true understanding. We too must be reborn from a material consciousness to a spiritual enlightenment and accept the power of God's grace into our heart to teach us how to soar above the material world with consciousness that darts across the sky, so to speak, as that passage we read. And ultimately, to realize that Muhammad was the one that brought us, you might say, a guided tour of the invisible realms. 
by teaching us there are many truths that we need to connect. The disconnected truths of reality and see them as a divine unity. Just as these manifestations are all part of a single process, we have to see how they tie together. We have to connect the dots. And so Muhammad introduced the idea of the unity of things we thought were separate as all part of God's beautiful, harmonious creation. And then the Bab came to tell us that with all that we had learned in the past, we are about to enter an age so different than anything we've ever seen before. We must realize we have to detach ourselves from time-honored traditions that no longer function in this new age and become entering a gate into a world no one's ever seen before. It's kind of like what happened when the Bob declared on May the 23rd, the next day, the electronic age was born. It was born because the telegraph was invented the next day. And the first message across the telegraph, what hath God wrought? Nothing would ever be the same again. And I suggest to you that the internet is the descendant of the telegraph. It's just an ever advancing, and that's something we need to be aware of. Our understanding of this great revelation must progress. Divine unity is a progression from gaining the enkindlement and fire of the Holy Spirit in our life, which we need. We need the knowledge of Moses and the obedience to the law. We need recognition of the manifestation. But eventually we have to see the divine unity and harmony of these teachings that brings it all together. And finally, that when we reach the, the stage where we let go of self completely, truly let go of our last vestiges of ambition or desire to uh, be recognized in any where we become nameless and placeless and allow the power of the Holy Spirit to so enrich our lives, we become like a hollow reed and the power and might of God's guidance comes into our individual lives and guides us to our part to play in this unfolding time of God and the fulfillment of uniting the peoples. I suggest to you this is all the faith of God today, but it, it enriches or it reconstitutes the truth of the past into a whole. And then when you look at the bottom of the page where it says, likewise continue thou to ascend through one revelation after another. This is the journey of a Baha'i today. This is what the Bab taught, that we are to continuously move through the spheres. It's a pathway from one world of consciousness to the next world of consciousness to the next world of consciousness. We continue with quotes. O thou who art enamored of the covenant, the blessed beauty hath promised this servant that souls would be raised up who would be the very embodiment of guidance and banners of the concourse on highs, torches of God's oneness and stars of his pure truth. They would confront all the peoples on the earth, pleading their cause with proofs of the Lord of the seven spheres. It is he who created for you all that is in the earth. Then he made for the heavens and fashioned them seven heavens, and he knows all things.